Welcome to Risk SA TV. We're at Sun City this week for the PSG annual conference, which kicked off today. I'm joined by Davi Klopper, investment economist for PSG Wealth, who shared with us today insights around the South African economy, broader uh, macro global economic trends. You you spoke today, Davi, about, um, well, yeah, about the state of South Africa and the question of whether we're at a crossroads. And the mood in South Africa at the moment is somber. And you touched on a lot of the very real concerns and reasons for that. Um, but if one takes a step outwards, a lot of other emerging markets at the moment are doing are doing worse. Um, is there, if we if we take that sort of macro scale perspective, are we doing as badly as we feel? I don't think we're doing as badly as we feel. The one thing, the one point, or the one indicator that's pointing that to us is is really the rand. Although the rand seems to be weak, it's weak against the dollar, but it's weak against a very strong currency. If we then compare the rand against other currencies, you can see actually a strengthening of the rand against the euro, against a number of other currencies in the world, even the Aussie dollar, for instance. So if you take that into account, the, the rand as the sort of share price of the country isn't that weak. So yes, then therefore we are, we are battling the mood is somber, as you have said. It's because of Eskim. It's because of the management in the country that's not doing well. And but I think we are sort of um, we are too 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 worried about what's happening in South Africa, and we are missing the real um, pockets of excellence in the process. You spoke also about the commodity cycle and mentioned that we shouldn't be expecting a, a rise in the super cycle uh, again. Why is that? Uh, you, you suggested also that people should be a little nervous of and a little wary of uh, commodity-linked equities. Uh, should people be disinvesting if they are currently invested? Good questions. First of all, the reason why I think we should not expect another super cycle again is because of China. The growth is slowing down in China. They are changing the economy from an investment-led economy to more a consumer, consumer-orientated economy. And therefore, they have, they have invested in a lot of um, infrastructure in that country that, that, that needs to give them some, some um, return, first of all, before they can continue to invest in that. So I think they will, sl- they will definitely have a slowdown in their demand for commodities on the back of that. And therefore, we shouldn't expect another big rise in the commodity in commodity prices and therefore not a repeat of that cycle we should see a normalization of that cycle on the back of that we have seen a big decline in consumer stocks in the value of them and on the back of that a lot of fund managers are suggesting that you should invest in them because they are so cheap now compared to their histories they are cheap but isn't that a value trap um, I was interested also in your suggestion that South Africa should be looking or could be looking to lower in, uh, interest rates further. And of course, the conversation at the moment and the trajectory we seem to be set on is that we're at the bottom of an of a increasing cycle. Uh, why do you suggest that? And what are your concerns if we do uh, see the predictions come, come through and we do see rises? First of all, we are completely out of sync with the rest of the world. R- the rest of the world, 95% of countries in the world, are cutting interest rates at this stage. And we are talking increasing interest rates. We're doing so because we're worried about inflation. But then again, inflation in South Africa has surprised the downside all, for a long time now, despite the huge hikes in, in electricity tariffs. And, and for that reason, I think we have, we've overemphasized the need to hike interest rates on the back of possibly higher inflation. And I think we should follow the rest of the world in, 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 in supporting the economy through lower interest rates. And, and I think it's wrong to, to create the expectation of higher interest rates because on the back of that, people are postponing the investment that they want to make, the infrastructure investments. Um, companies are doing that. They are hoarding money because they're worried about economic growth. So I think we need to rethink the whole interest rate hike story that we are currently sort of um, um, advertising out to the out to the public, out to the business people out there. So, of course, we've been in this phase of uh, booming markets and uh, a bull market for five years now. Um, most people would suggest then that historically it looks like we're set for a dip in the market at the very least. Uh, but you suggest that it's possible that could just keep going. Uh, why do you suggest that? Yes, I would suggest that because bull market just don't stop like that it needs some 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 
parameters or stuff to happen around it. First of all, the public should start to participate in the market on, in a speculative way, and we're not seeing that yet. There, there are a lot of worries about the market at this stage because of the length of the bull market up to now, but certainly everybody is expecting a big fall in the market, and on the back of that, the market tends to climb these, this wall of worry. Then secondly, another characteristic of a, the end of a bull market is a lot of new listings. That's not taking place yet. And we're seeing here and there a new listing. But in the past, we've seen more than one listing a week or even one or two a day. And that would signal um, the end of the bull market. We are not seeing that yet. I'm a bit concerned about the valuation of the market. But then again, in the 60s, which is a comparable period to this period, which was also a very long bull market, um, the market start its final blow off phase on a fairly high P like we've got now. Um, not at perhaps one or two points below the current level, but still a fairly high P level. So on the back of that, one could expect a further increase in the markets. And, and I've said two, three years ago at this conference that we should expect a 64,000 index level. We are not there yet. And at that stage, the market was just at about 40,000. But we're moving towards that point. And, and if we were to repeat the 60s, we could expect a far higher market than even 64,000. And, and there's so much consensus about a big decline coming up that I think the consensus is going to be wrong again. So, so just lastly, on building on that, do you have any thoughts for advisors in how they communicate with their clients and sort of manage their clients' expectations in, in something which is, we're in a time that's so unpredictable? It's, it's, it's difficult. Uh, the pre un unpredictability of the market, the volatility of the market is making it difficult for, for advisors out there, their clients' expectations of a big fall in the market. I think the way to deal with that is to make sure that you've got a plan in place for your clients. If they are long-term investors, keep them in the market. If they are, if they are worried, well, take some, some of the equity exposure off the table, but don't take them out completely. Take, move them into a moderate fund, out of an equity fund, for instance, or just make sure that they've got enough, um, that they've made enough provision for their short-term needs in, 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 in the money market. Apart from that, you can stay in the market because you've got a plan, it's a long-term plan, stay in the market. If you're going to come out of the market and the market continue to move, you're going to look silly.